theorizing that one could time travel within his own lifetime, Dr. Sam Beckett stepped into the Quantum Leap Accelerator and vanished. He awoke to find himself trapped in the past, facing mirror images that were not his own, and driven by an unknown force to change history for the better. His only guide on this journey is Al, an observer from his own time, who appears in the form of a hologram that only Sam can see and hear. And so Dr. Beckett finds himself leaping from life to life, striving to put right what once went wrong, and hoping each time that his next leap will be the leap home. Congressman Walters, Congressman Walters. Y yes. Congressman Walters, you were just saying that you are against recommending the passage of the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act in the House. As committee chairman, I have to ask you, what is your reasoning? Oh boy. Are you okay? You don't look too well. Uh, excuse me for a minute. Who am I now? Everyone wore jackets like this. But what am I doing here? Ziggy says there's a 79% a chance you're here to convince the Cong Congressional Committee not to recommend passage of the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act into the House. The Foreign Corrupt Practices Act? What's that? It's the FCPA. It's a law that was passed in 1977 and amended in 1988. It prohibits American multinational corporations from making foreign political payments. Foreign political payments? You mean bribes? Oh, those should be unethical, right? Well, that's how the committee sees it. But there's more to it than that, and you have to show on the other side. Why is this such an important issue now? Sam, this is 1977. Watergate was only five years ago, and it was such a big political scandal that it made the entire country really paranoid about corruption. So when hundreds of companies admitted to the Security Exchange Commission that they had made some questionable payments, the U.S. demanded that something be done. So why am I supposed to convince the committee not to recommend the act? Well, Sam, there are other reasons. Defensive reasons. The bottom line here is that U.S. businesses will suffer if the act is passed because they won't be able to use foreign payments to stay competitive in the world market. Okay, defensive reasons. Explain them to me pretty quickly. I need to get back. Okay, Congressman Walters. Now are you ready to tell us your views against the FCPA? Yes, I I'm against it for defensive reasons. What defensive reasons? What defensive reasons? Al? Al. Oh, uh, Ziggy says there are four of them. The first is to decrease political risks. To decrease political risks. Um, do you mean like that incident that happened with United Brands in Central America? Well, um, I think it was six countries formed a trust in Central America. And what happened is they decided to tax United Brands on every 40-pound box or so that was the, of bananas they had. And what ended up happening is this tax was so astronomical that it equaled what the profits they made the previous year. A company can't be expected to stay in business under these kind of conditions. 
the only choice they had was to try to uh, pay off a Honduran official to try to break up the trust. I understand what you're saying, but I believe the total social costs outweigh the business profits. And, in addition to being totally unethical, if the public found out, it would compromise the reputation of the business. I agree with you completely, and I think we need to consider more leadership in companies. If our top executives are practicing immoral acts, then it's just going to be passed on to their subordinates. Well, what I don't understand is how executives can lead moral private lives but then act so immorally in their corporations and feel no remorse. I don't think we should condone this kind of double standard. It's not necessarily a double standard. It's a way for these companies to survive. There are times when companies need to pay police or possibly military, uh, military in foreign countries for security reasons. You might call this unethical, but many times the companies are just responding to certain threats, such as kidnapping. I see your point. I didn't know there were so many other reasons for making payments. I'm not so sure that I'm convinced. But before you make your final decision, you need to think about this. There are more than just these defensive reasons to take into consideration. Multinational companies need to protect themselves against inflated taxes. For example, an Argentine subsidiary, I think of Campbell's Soup, was asked to pay an Argentine official in order to secure a tax exemption, which he was already entitled to under the law. Is this a common practice in other countries? Yes. All these payments for defensive purposes are common in most countries. They look unethical to us because they are not common here in the U.S. We, but we need to follow these other countries' businesses' standards in order to survive. Exactly. Many times foreign countries, uh, lower officials need a little incentive to get the ball rolling or to get things done in a reasonable amount of time or to get them done at all. I realize your skepticism on the ethical issues, but it's unrealistic to expect our international corporations to continue to grow without adhering to foreign practices. So what's the outcome going to be? Sam, Ziggy says... Ziggy says you did it. You managed to sway them all. Even though the bill eventually passes into law during the session in Congress, you managed to convince the committee to recommend against passage, and that's the only reason you were here. You'll probably leave any minute now. Professor Bruce Berry? Oh boy, 